Good afternoon, everyone. This is my immense pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to ET Brand Equity's live session, where we are all here to uh, understand, uh, discuss, and delve deep into what it looks like and, and discuss about digital marketing into what it looks like in the cookie-less world. Uh, as titled and as uh, you know, very rightly titled, Baking Success in the Cookie-less World, we'll understand how businesses and brands are strategizing uh, in this cookie-less uh, universe, in this cookie-less era. So in you know, uh, understanding about the internet and those who, are, who have worked around the internet and digital marketing, and they will uh, agree with me that you know, it is hard to imagine the internet world without cookies. But with growing uh, you know, concerns around security, with growing concerns around data, uh, it was evident that you know, cookies were going to crumble in the internet world. And, uh, and, and eventually it is going, it, it's happening very soon. Uh, today, I'm uh, thrilled to be joined by, you know, uh, two very, uh, you know, distinct professionals in their fields who have been dwelling with this uh, entire trend of cookie-less uh, era and how to strategize good marketing uh, st strategies and devise good marketing strategies around this world garden of cookie-less. Uh, without further, uh, you know, uh, ado, I will want to, uh, and it's my privilege to uh, welcome Mr. Swamita Dhankar, who is uh, the Solutions Consulting Manager at Adobe. So welcome, Swamita. It's a great pleasure to have you on board. I'm also thrilled to be joined by Mr. Vakul Agarwal, Senior Director at Brofers. Uh, Vakul has been uh, leading digital marketing and, you know, uh, marketing functions at Brofers. And Brofers, as you all know, is a, is a leading brand uh, as far as online grocery is concerned. So welcome, Vakul. It's a great pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So I'll just, uh, you know, let my audience. Take, I'll take my audiences through the how Adobe is looking into the uh, entire world of cookie-less world and you know how they are helping uh, brands and marketers navigate better through it. So I'll uh, request uh, Samitra to come on board and you know share his thoughts on that uh, and we'll uh, gradually move on to a intriguing fireside chat where we will discuss uh, majorly about uh, strategies and how to uh, you know bake success in this cookie-less world. So over to you, Somitra. We are looking forward to your chat. Thank you so much, Satraji. I hope the presentation is visible. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time out to join the webinar today afternoon, which we have titled as Baking Success in a Cookie-less World. In the next 20 odd minutes, I intend to take you through as to what do we exactly mean by cookie-less world, right? Why? Have we come to a point where we are looking at a cookie-less world? What are its implications and what could be the way forward? We all know what is a cookie to start my presentation, right? Cookie is a code snippet that the web server writes to your browser when you request information. Uh, they are meant to track user data more efficiently and uh, it helps the web server remember the user preferences. To tell you a fun fact, Cookies were invented by a gentleman by name Lou Montioli. That's Lou Montioli for you. Interesting hairstyle, right? Uh, Lou was a young software engineer in Netscape. And Netscape was building world's first uh, browser in 1993. And Lou faced a very peculiar problem, right? Whatever request he would ask the web server, right? So if he is going uh, and typing yahoo.com, he would get the web page. But the moment he does some action, add something to the shopping cart and request something to the web server again, the web server may forget, right? And uh, the web server uh, in that sense is like the Amir Khan of Kajini, right? Short-term memory loss, doesn't remember what was asked. Or, uh, or uh, the interesting character of Dory in the animation movie, Finding Nemo. Uh, in the technical world, it's called the statelessness of web server. Uh, it still continues to be like that. And Cookie solved that problem, right? Cookie helped web servers remember what was uh, previously requested. It helps build persistence, right? And naturally, this was groundbreaking for internet to get developed. What Lou developed was something called first party cookie. So the information that you request uh, from the web server, the web server writes back that code, right? So if you are going to ifbappliances.com, you will have a first party cookie set up by IFB Appliances. If you go to Amazon, Times of India, Flipkart, wherever, right? Uh, first party cookies would be set up by those respective domains. 
Now, what people also realized over a period of time is that it's not only the requesting domain uh, that can set up a cookie, but other people can also set up cookies, right? Uh, this could be other domains or advertisers, which means that not only ifp.com web server knows that I was on ifp.com, uh, others can also know it as well. These could be advertisers like Facebook, Google, anybody else, right? And this was goldmine to marketers, right? This was like ghar bete bete. I get all the information that I need to understand who wants movie tickets, who is looking for hotels, who wants to buy the next television. And without much surprise, for the next 25 odd years, the entire digital advertising marketing ecosystem got built around third party cookies, right? With tremendous success. Marketers use this extensively uh, to retarget customers, right? I am on your website, I didn't buy. Uh, you go to Facebook, I show an ad to you, right? You go to timesofindia.com, you see an ad, that's programmatic advertising. Understanding how user can be tracked across multiple domains, the entire programmatic ad ecosystem, getting customers to convert, acquiring customers, right? Third party cookies became the base of acquiring customers, performance measurement. I am showing so many ads, how many people are actually converting. This ran extremely successfully for last 25 years and continues to do so. But needless to say, right, it has its own set of concerns. If I am on ifb.com, why should someone else know, right? Why should people be knowing what I am looking at? Uh, these concerns were largely led by privacy, right? Privacy and my right uh, to remain private in the internet world. And progressively, we have seen the action against cookies, specifically third party cookies, becoming more and more stringent, right? So Safari blocked third party cookies, uh, so did Firefox. But the nail in the coffin was hit when Google blocked third party cookies, uh, rather announced blocking third party cookies two years ago, right? If I fast forward to today, this is the situation we are into, right? Six months from now, which is around January, February 2022, uh, Google Chrome is going to block third party cookies, right? And since Google Chrome has almost 65% global market share, maybe 90% market share in India, right? All of us are Chrome users. Uh, the third party cookies are gone, right? They are gone for good. And what does this mean for the marketers, right? Uh, what does this mean for people like you who have been using it for all the time? What changes, right? Four thing changes for you, right? The first thing that change is the way you collect data. The way you collect data for customers when they come on your website, all the data collection that is going to happen is going to be first party based, right? Remember, it's only the third party cookie the other domain or advertisers which were tracking you is going to go away. The first party data where the requesting web server is going to remain and that is going to be the way for future for us, right? So all the identities based on first party data uh, are going to remain. Customers will still remain anonymous, right? Uh, so how taking that first party cookie, uh, using some sort of third party cookie to do a mashing and linking it, right? Doing a probabilistic match saying this could be the same person, all of all of that is going to go away, right? What also goes away is any sort of cross device or domain measurement uh, that you that marketers were doing. Uh, someone who has previously clicked on an ad, what has been an exposure, that goes away. And a thriving third party marketplace, right? and I'll also talk about it later, that is also likely to go away. Uh, the bottom line is going in future, the only data that will be available for you in an anonymous session would be the behavioral data on that specific device. And the only way to link that anonymous data to a known customer record is deterministic authentication, right? Unless I log in to the website using an email ID or phone number, this anonymous data will remain anonymous in my first party cookie. The second thing that changes is offered personalization, right? Everything that I want to personalize on my website, I can't rely, rely on anything else, but the first party cookies that I am consuming, right? And my first party cookies are going to stake or store consumer behavior. So someone who is interested in product X versus product Y, which is where I create segment, those behavioral segments will also come uh, from first party data. The decisioning of the offer that you want to give to a customer, right, as he is navigating your website, that also completely moves uh, to first party data. 
Uh, it could also be a limited offline data that you can mix with the with the first party data, right? The bottom line here is, since the first party data is the only way to personalize, the collection of this first party data, behavioral data as customer is on the side becomes super important. Uh, the segmentation that I do can't take four hours, 14 hours, 24 hours to happen. The segmentation has to happen in milliseconds, right? And when we are talking about milliseconds, just rule-based logic is not enough. Uh, what you would need is a real machine learning algorithm helping you there. Right? The third thing that obviously changes is retargeting. Right? I come to your website, I add to cart. There's no way you can target me on Facebook or any other place. Right? The only way you will be able to target me on Facebook is through authentication. So retargeting based on authentication, based on email ID, phone number, if I've shared that with you on my website, that will remain. Anonymous retargeting uh, based on interest group is something that is still testing its waters. You would have heard Google's announcement, announcement around this. We'll see how it goes, right? The measurement, uh, a direct attribution uh, of ads to user persona, that may not be possible. Bottom line is marketers will have less control on how to do retargeting. And there's no way to connect an anonymous customer data to an ad that he has seen, right? So that's the third thing. The fourth thing and probably the biggest change that's going to happen is the audience-based marketplaces, right? Marketers heavily and extensively used third-party audiences to target customers on wall gardens, DSPs, and publishers, right? In absence of third-party cookies, what we see emerging is an alternative identifier, right? And uh, publishers have joined hand, advertisers have joined hand, everybody has an ID. Uh, essentially, there are multiple identity services, some of which will survive, some of which may die down, but every identity service worth its salt will have to have a consent and governor's framework built with it, right? With the customer consent, I collect customer's behavioral data, I map it to his personal ID and create an actionable customer profile with which I can target customers over wall gardens on demand side platforms, earlier it was cookies and mobile IDs, it would be hashed PIs and partner IDs, uh, as well as on publishers, right? So those are the four things that are changing, right? The way data is collected, the way offers are personalized on website, the way retargeting was done outside your digital properties, and the way you used audience data. Now, this is a lot of change, right? This was a well-oiled machinery, which was working for 25 odd years. Uh, how is a marketer going to deal with this, right? What are the changes that are coming his way? So let's look at that. There are essentially two things marketers are going to face, right? The first is the acquisition marketing workflows that depended on third-party cookies are in danger, right? So uh, your customer journeys, if they span across multiple properties, if they involve leveraging third-party properties, those may be numbered, right? The days of those acquisition journeys may be numbered. The second thing is uh, marketers may need to rely more on durable identifiers, right? Uh, something that is going to last, something that is maybe owned by them, right? And the first party cookie is an excellent example of a durable identifier uh, that is owned by you, that is privacy compliant. Net-net, what this would result in is retooling of your acquisition stack. Right? The acquisition stack that marketers used, uh, which involved products for cross-device analytics, prospecting, personalization, retargeting, and attribution. Now, this could be one product. This could be more than one product. Right? Uh, the whole cookie-based acquisition layer, which was using the third-party cookie-based infrastructure model, uh, this may need to change or this may need to be retooled. Right? And this could be a big change for the marketer. So how does a marketer deal with it? Right? A marketer needs three things to deal with this change. The first thing that a marketer needs in a cookie-less world is a strategy. Right? How do I transform my brand acquisition strategy around first-party data? Right? How do I think privacy first in this new world? The second thing that the marketer will need is a purpose-built platform that puts privacy and first-party data in the forefront. The third thing that you will need is actually the process that operates efficiently uh, in a cookie-less world that brings in better operational efficiency, saves time for you, so on and so forth, right? Now, this is a very small session to talk about strategy, technology, process, everything, right? 
so just to give you a small cheat sheet, how do you put it in practice? When it comes to strategy, it is about building experiences that are worth authenticating, right? It is about looking at your customer journeys and see whether they have an element of authentication. If not, we have to encourage authentication with purpose built value experiences and frictionless logins, right? And this will depend from industry to industry. There are industries like insurance where a fair element of authentication is already built in, right? If you want a quote, you have to give an uh, email ID or mobile number, right? So maybe their journeys don't change too much, but there are customers uh, who are going to change drastically in terms of their marketing approach, right? For example, the CPG industry, right? Consumer private goods, uh, I'm Nestle, I'm Cadbury's, I am uh, IPC Foods, Hindustan Unilever. I never cared about authenticating the customer, right? Uh, all I wanted was branding. Those customers are thinking and redesigning their journeys as we speak, right? They are putting value-based experiences, authentication, trust and transparency uh, to win customers in real time. So that's the strategy pillar. Uh, the process pillar is about bringing the organizational change around first party, right? A classic call, walk and run approach can help here. Establish a COE, uh, have a cross-functional team to activate first party data. Uh, run could be having agile teams that activate the every part of customer journey, right? Again, this will also change from industry to industry. Uh, there are industries who may look at collecting first party data to start with, right? They don't have a good mechanisms to collect first party data. Uh, with strategy and process comes technology, right? And this could also be in building a cookie-less architecture. As I said, it could be retooling in existing systems or taking new systems. But these are the top five use cases that customers are today looking at. These are not in any order of priority. Uh, how do I build a real-time customer profile, right? Since my website is going to be the most important engagement platform, how do I engage with customer in real time? How do I get that real time data? There are fair businesses that today run in an online and offline mode. How do I do an omni-channel analytics, right? The influence happens on digital, the conversion happens offline. How do I marry that data? How do I orchestrate my inbound and onbound digital experiences, right? Customers come to my website, uh, they authenticate themselves. I send them emails, uh, encouraging them to come back and transact or uh, share their experiences? How do I orchestrate sort of that inbound and outbound? How do I advertise using first party data, right? And this may seem like a distinct dream. Uh, some of you may find it a little laughable, but uh, this may be the reality that we are facing, right? And it may come sooner than later. And how do I sort of create a first party infrastructure? As I said, if I'm not collecting first party data in a robust manner, how do I collect it well, right? Now, this may be too much, right? So. This may require a lot of organizational uh, people to come together. This may require some sort of blessings from management. So what could be the four low hanging fruit, right? As a marketer, what are the four things you can do quickly in next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Uh, very easy, right? Four things, the first one being maximize your first party data and focus on authentication, right? Start collecting first party data in a robust manner. See how you build your first party data sources. Understand your journey, see if there are breaking around third party cookies, convert them to first party and make them seamless, right? To do one and two, you may want a new technology stack. So as you evaluate a technology stack and as it happens with every digital transformation, uh, there are multiple vendors available at different price points and technology scale. Uh, something that's open, something that's gonna scale for tomorrow is something that you may want to pick up and uh, one thing to avoid is lock-in, right? As I told you, there are multiple vendors. So are you binding yourself to a proprietary platform or are you building something that is open, that is integrable, uh, something that is scalable, right? What is uh, What can run tomorrow and for the next 10 years also, right? And why am I talking about this? Where does Adobe come into picture? I'm happy to introduce the Adobe Experience Cloud Platform to you, which is purpose-built for marketers to conquer the cookie-less world, right? This is a platform that we have built and launched worldwide two years ago, and now also available in India. Collecting data sources, uh, collecting data from multiple data sources, behavioral data, transactional data, financial, operational, right? Collecting that in real time, 
creating an experience data model that gives you uh, not only behavioral data, but also the ability to mix it with your traditional financial and transactional data, giving you ready-made commit connectors to stream data from multiple systems. Once data is in place, how do I build a real-time customer profile, right? How do I stitch it all together uh, so that I can act upon it? How do I quickly match the RMIDs and online behavior to understand what were past purchases and what he's looking for now? And as I said, for, do, for doing all of this in real time, you need a layer of AI and machine learning. So what is also available in the experience platform is not just a real-time customer data platform, but also a fully built query service, data science workspace, intelligence AI services that helps you manage attribution. Last but not the least, how do I deliver it, right? And that's where edge computing comes into picture, delivering it re in it real time across Adobe solutions, customer apps. Uh, we have built a platform that's open, that's intelligent, that takes care of privacy, and that works in real time, right? And not only that, as we have built a platform, we have redesigned the entire architecture that you may know Adobe for, right? So the existing applications that Adobe always had, they are now being integrated with the new age applications. There's customer journey analytics for online and offline. There is real-time customer data platform to build customer data, collect customer data, act upon it, right? That integrates with the DMP. There's Adobe Journey Optimizer to deliver uh, messages at scale, which integrates in turn uh, with the real-time customer data platform. There's Target to Personalize, which again is integrated with all of these products. So this pre-integrated stack, this revamp architecture is what we are bringing to the table, enabled with a great layer of service to manage customer identity, right? Across anonymous and known, create that customer profile, do segmentation, data ingestion, uh, keeping privacy and governance in picture. Net net, this is Lou. Right? You may not have recognized him, but that's Lou for you in 2021. Uh, he looks he looks more like you and me. Uh, the interesting hairstyle is gone, right? And recently he spoke about some mistakes that he made about designing cookie right and some of the things that he wants to correct what i want to tell you is adobe has built that platform keeping that vision in mind right keeping privacy in mind it's time to set things right you and i can do it together reach out to me uh, to get started right we can do a free assessment to understand what is your maturity uh, for cookieless environment we can present a personalized point of view to you on how you can go about embarrassing cookie-less, right? Remember I spoke about strategy, process, and technology. How does that come together? The point of view will tell you that, right? And we are a technology company, so we can come back and present an insightful architecture to you uh, on what is your technology readiness for cookie-less. Right? Let's build this cookie-less future together. Thank you so much, Satrajit, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Samitra. I mean, uh, you know that what that is what Cookies does, right? You it transform you from a you know interesting hairstyle to a very you know natural and normal person. So, so that's great. And uh, I think you know it was uh, really insightful, and you know uh, the inputs and anecdotes that you shared were uh, really great. And it, I'm sure you know it 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 has left our audiences with a lot of uh, you know thoughts to ponder upon and uh, think about how to strategize well. well. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of questions coming up from our audiences, so uh, I'll request them to keep them coming. Uh, you know, uh, once we are uh, towards, once we reach the end of the discussion, we will definitely take those questions and uh, try and get them answered by Samitra and Vakul. Uh, I'll now welcome Vakul on stage. Uh, Vakul, if you can turn on camera. Hey, hi, Vakul. Uh, hi. Great. So, you know, uh, now, uh, Staying on to Kukiles and you know taking a cue from what uh, Samitra had shared in his uh, presentation, it's time for some for some uh, future gazing, right? And uh, you know who best than these two gentlemen to help us with understanding the Kukiles uh, environment better. Uh, so Samitra, I, I'll just take a cue from your presentation and where you have uh, mentioned about so many changes that a marketer or you know or a brand needs to go through. Uh, you know, especially when uh, they think about marketing in this cookie world. I have been talking to a lot of marketers and uh, their major concern uh, has been the major behavioral change that one needs to imbibe, right? Uh, 
so there was a set pattern of marketing uh, until you know the pre cookie era right and in this cookie era there that that pattern is changing so i want to i would want to understand from bakul as a as a brand leader here right uh, what kind of behavioral changes does a marketer need to you know uh, take on to himself and you know uh, what are the kind of changes that a marketing department needs to take you know think through uh, in this entire cookie scenario so uh, so i think Suma, sumitra has already covered some part of it i'll probably detail it out uh, so more and more traffic for us uh, is coming on the app the right? websites are not seeing that much traction that we used to see before coupled with you not getting cookies across different websites right cookies will eventually be not so useful in the near future and then to capture first party data becomes really important because that is the least one brand can do so how do you ensure that you have a really good onboarding process right you are capturing all the events uh, that you think are useful and on which you can build your re-engagement strategy or your prospecting strategy uh, that becomes very important that is step 1 if a brand is doing that step 1 really well then i would say go to a step 2 or a step 3 wherein you figure out uh, a good player out there for example there are multiple examples but uh, adobe dmp is one great example right they have renamed it to an audience manager right now wherein you can uh, couple your first party data with say a third party data or a second party data to just uh, ensure that your data is much richer and hence your prospecting campaigns and your retargeting campaigns will be better in terms of your roi but the first thing is how do you ensure that you are capturing your first party data really well that is where it starts uh somitra your take you know how have you seen in your interactions with uh, you know major marketers and major brand leaders across categories right how do we react to that uh, this 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 sudden sea of change and uh, like you know uh, what are the questions that they ask you So absolutely, and uh, I second what uh, Bakul said, Satrajit. Uh, everybody is uh, preparing themselves for the new reality. Right? Uh, everybody is looking at collecting first-party data. There was a way of doing things, and uh, history repeats itself, Satrajit. Right? So uh, this is not something that has happened to marketing first time. Right? Thirty, uh, forty years ago, EPBX was invented. Right? And that led to the boom of call centers. Right, and suddenly marketers were calling people, right? Calling you and me, selling products and services. And then came the privacy norms, saying that you can't call me if I have not shared your number. Now, while people were calling each other, uh, calling lists were very popular, right? You buy a list from someone, he gives you a bunch of phone numbers, right? These are one lakh people uh, interested in buying a TV, right? God knows whether that's true or false, but yeah, there is phone numbers, so there are army of agents who will go on calling. some would qualify some sale would happen right and this was happening uh, and suddenly the dnd i right, do not call privacy norms came and uh, we couldn't call people so that's where marketers realized the right way to do is to have that data in your crm right? and that's where crm system built and that is where they are uh, we are facing the same uh, interjection today right? there was a way of doing things uh, third party cookies were convenient uh they also showed result uh they had their utility uh, now is the time to build it uh, grounds up now is the time to focus on first party and uh, that is that is what marketers are looking at right as i uh, mentioned in the session the impact on customer journeys depend from industry to industry right there are some journeys uh, which were heavy on authenticating the customer first uh, they may not have to change so much but uh, there are customers who never thought of authenticating uh need to be customers uh, like it it services uh, consumer private goods customers they are looking at rebuilding the entire customer journey around the first party ecosystem uh, that's what i see in the market right right uh, thanks so much it was uh, a good insight so uh, i'm moving on to vakul and you know try and understand so you know you are a digital first brand right and in this digital era uh, i mean uh, for every brand you know uh, irrespective of whatever category uh, they are operating in you know 
uh, being present with the customer all throughout his or her journey right uh, has been very important right somebody you know uh, was sharing this example of his experience of buying a tv right uh, uh, and 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 the, there was a sales person with him taking him all throughout all you know uh, virtually right and you know he has been tracked uh, right you know uh, since he was researching about the product to his his, his customer journey uh, ended with the uh, with buy in so so how do you ensure and now that the third party uh, cookies are crumbling right so how do you ensure as a brand that you know uh, first I, i mean you know first party cookies do give you that data and do give you that help and understanding about the customer uh, so it is to map the entire uh, user flow on the app or on the website and understand what points would you want to capture mm-hmm. uh, in the overall user journey right? just to give you a very typical uh, e-commerce example right If someone is browsing a website or someone is browsing the app, uh, you may want to know what parts they browsed, what categories, subcategories they were interested in, uh, did they add a product to the cart or not, uh, and whether they actually purchased or not. Right. So these are few things which are rational. You would want to know about these things from from a business perspective. What is the user interested in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. and then you try to build your strategies around these rational data points that you have collected right so that is how we look at uh, identify what all events you would want to capture and then build strategies around these events don't overdo it because if you overdo then there is a high risk of the customer going away from the brand and then hence you need to find the right balance where you have a single touch point or a single communication but it has to be really relevant for that user not only relevant but the time at which you communicate should also be really optimal so these things uh, needs to be kept in mind correct uh, so with your take on this so you know uh, how do you map the customer journey with first party data without you know uh, third party cookies being around absolutely and uh, thanks uh, bakul for sharing those insights i think yeah. uh, this was happening in some shape and form already that it was not that first party journeys were not completely mapped at all what needs to be relooked is the way we are mapping them right because earlier if the customer uh, does not convert in the first party journey right uh, i come to the website i don't buy i add to the cart but i don't buy i had the option to show you an ad on facebook which hopefully you will click and come back to the website right uh, but that option is gone so the first party journeys now have to be more relevant in terms of trying to convert the customer then and there right first of all purpose building authentication right authentication not for the sake of it uh, no one wants to authenticate right that's the that's the fact uh, if i go to a website i don't want to give my email address i don't want to give my phone number so how do i repurpose my journeys in a way that it becomes meaningful for the customer right okay. secondly for the short span of time that the customer is on the website at right, the average time i spend on uh, grofers app is let's say 3 minutes right uh, if i have to quickly buy something then within those 3 minutes if i was collecting 10 data elements how can i collect 15 data elements uh, faster right so data collection has to change and uh, using that data element can i quickly give an offer to the customer as he is experiencing the website right so this is what uh, is changing and this is what uh, customers are currently looking at using first party data using customers present on the website uh, how do i collect data faster how do i do segmentation better how do i give right offers without sounding intrusive right what will made a very important point uh, not popping up offers for the sake of it right no one wants right. and uh, this is a hard thing to do right as much as Uh, easy it sounds it is easy to sound 10% off to everyone but i am not motivated by that right maybe i am motivated by something else uh, which is where i think uh, machine learning and ai will play a greater role the scale at which we are trying to do it uh, to individual customers uh, may not be possible possible to do it by the rules based logic that we typically do it right hey if this customer comes in show him this if this customer show him this that route that that rule set is going to cross the number of rows that you can store okay so you need uh, mechanisms which will construct these rule sets in real time and create 
and serve these offers dynamically, which is where I think machine learning and AI will play a greater role. Interesting, interesting how you connected this Kapilesh world with the machine learning and you know AI. These are also very important aspects and important uh, you know uh, trends in emerging in the digital marketing. Uh, arena as such so bakul you know uh, staying on to kukulus right and uh, so uh, and and speaking about your campaigns and you know gauging the effectiveness do you see this uh, you know uh, so kukulus playing a major role uh, in, uh, in 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 basically creating a roadblock or uh, creating some difficulties in understanding the you know effectiveness of your campaigns yeah. there will definitely be right because uh, see retargeting would be a huge problem if you don't get cookies and if they don't mean anything and mm-hmm. that also means that your onboarding process needs to be super efficient right if you are collecting first party data then you would try to collect it for all 100 users who visited the website and hence uh, the validation or the onboarding process needs to be super critical so it will definitely impact uh, right so there is no doubt about it but it will also push marketers to then pitch their product in the right way right probably on prospecting use the right strategies to bring in the right set of people onto the product right so those things would become much more important uh, and also i think uh, because see uh, at least in my category or uh, in the sector that we are in websites are also losing some uh, shine Uh, right. mobile apps is what people are uh, on to right now true that makes true. things little easier because if someone has already installed the app uh, right you have a very hard device id at your end mm-hmm. which you can then use to retarget so that makes things little easier where an a marketer can shift focus from uh, a say a website to app uh, but for websites i think uh, your onboarding process and your prospecting needs to be much better right so uh, bakul you know i'll stay with you and you know i want to understand more about uh, so you mentioned about you know uh, uh, the limitations around websites whereas you know on apps you are you have the data at hand right uh, what are some other limitations that you see in this uh, entire cookless uh, you know arena and cookless uh, you know environment and scenario no so uh, in the entire scenario i i generally am concerned about the entire reengagement strategy right because we spend a lot in acquiring users that's the major spend a marketer does it's always 80 20 80 towards getting more new users because that is what shows growth in the business and if you're spending that huge amount in acquiring users or probably bringing them to your website and if you're not able to probably retarget them or know anything about them then it's a huge cost to company sure. right and that is what is a major uh, worry sign uh, for a marketer according to my view right uh, so with so how do we how do we go about it right you know this uh, bakul mentioned about uh, uh, retargeting and you know onboarding a consumer right and you know making him uh, transact right uh, so so how do you go about it uh, what are your solutions that you propose so absolutely i think uh, talking about retargeting i think in its in its existing form uh, which is based on third party cookies uh, it will continue for some time but Uh, what i am seeing marketers uh, also consider is uh, how do i do first party advertising right uh, it is still a thought process people are still uh, trying to gauge what it takes uh, but it's definitely something that's uh, in top of mind of a marketer right how do i retarget using first party what are those durable ids i can consider right and as with any situation in flux right whenever there is uncertainty whenever there is flux uh, there are lot of uh solutions that come up right some of which survive some of which don't so there are a lot of ids that are currently in market some uh, technology providers have come up with id publishers have joined hand uh, hand get ids uh, how it is going to span out is only time will tell but what will definitely remain is the first party id right so uh, while people are trying or testing these alternate ids uh the smart marketer is also focusing on building a durable id which is first party id right because that is definitely going to stay uh that uh, could be a slightly long term versus this could be instant gratification but as with all instant gratifications you know they tend to fade away and what what uh, lives is the durable uh, id so i think that that is what will happen in case of marketing as well 
Right. So, you know, uh, staying on to this and, you know, moving on uh, with uh, another important aspect of digital marketing is, you know, uh, uh, real time personalization and, you know, uh, digital first brands, actually brands across categories are now, you know, trying to personalize and, you know, market to the I, right, the market to the me kind of thing. Uh, how do you see this happening in the cookless world? I'll come to Swamitra first and then I'll go to uh, Bakula and understand his takes. So, Swamitra, you want to. Sure, absolutely. I think the 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 foundation of real real time personalization uh, becomes the data that I have collected in the context. Right. In this context, if I am on Grover's app and I am looking at uh, one specific product, right, uh, is there an opportunity to personalize based on that specific product, uh, rather than you know my past data showing that uh, I have more affinity to a specific offer and showing that. Right? Uh, while that may be true, uh, this is definitely true, right? I am in that moment of truth. I am about to buy that product. Uh, it could be Grover's, it could be anyone else. So that in-context personalization, as you are in that moment of truth, uh, will matter increasingly going forward. And to make it happen, uh, having the right data set in first party, right? Having collected that data set in first party, uh, knowing what device, what connection speed I'm coming into, Right, which geography of the country I am in, uh, how much time I have spent on the page, uh, using combination of factors, I can go on and on. Uh, to give something in real time is the essence of real time personalization. It could also mean if I'm authenticated, following it up uh, with a push notification or email as appropriate, right? Uh, if I'm on the app, don't send me emails, right? Give me a push, I'm happy to consume. So, uh, understanding those nuances also in mind uh, would be the essence of uh, real-time personalization. As we say, it's one is to one personalization. Uh, it's not a segment-based personalization anymore. Right. What could you take? See, uh, I think at the core of it is how much do you know about the user? Right. Uh, that's the very core. If you know uh, about the user that, okay, he or she is aged between 20 to 25, prefers these categories, these products, this is the time that she or he buys on the app, this is the time then uh, that she'll be looking for that particular category. And all these aspects would help. The kind of affluence score, the address where she or he lives. So the, these data points will help you understand the user better. And then the use case can be endless, right? Do they prefer an email or a notification at 5 p.m. or early in the morning? Right. Which category should you use to uh, send it on a push notification or an email? Right. Do they uh, are they discount seeker or they are an affluent user who prefers convenience? Right. It's making personas across your users. So these are things that uh, a marketer should do. We have a very extensive exercise wherein we have more than thirty six cohorts. Right. Where all our users divided in these personas, and then we try to understand it. It's a never ending exercise. Right. You just want to know more and more about your users and they'll give you signals, which defines it. So that is right. automatic. Right. So, you know, uh, and, and since we are speaking about the consumer behavior and, you know, consumer data points, right? Uh, I'll try to understand from you. Uh, and obviously I'll take uh, Samitra's uh, take as well. I'll come to Samitra as well on this. So we have this first party data already, right? And, you know, uh, uh, and the third party data that we had collected so far, mm -hmm. a particular user, right? Does this become redundant now? Because, you know, we know that consumers are ever evolving, right? Their preferences change, their patterns change, yep. right? So the third party data that brands have spent so much on to acquire and understand and study and then, mm -hmm. you know, strategize their campaigns on, does this become totally irrelevant? So that is why it is important to refresh that data. Right? If you're consuming it, for example, today, Right? I say that, okay, I want an affluence score for my first party data. Mm -hmm. I took an affluence score. It is important to refresh that score after three months or six months so that you refresh the score because consumers can change, right? Household incomes do change year on year. True. So that is why it is important to refresh uh, that. And I think most of the players work in that sense only, right? If, if I go to Adobe audience manager and I say uh, tie up with XYZ third party, they will obviously charge me basis how much is my refresh frequency and marketers should definitely refresh given the uh, data point that they are trying to capture. 
correct so with your take uh, how do we marry these two absolutely i think uh, marrying these two uh, is one aspect but how do i uh, convert the third party data i have into first party right there could be strategies True. and campaigns right as as we know uh, it may be gone right uh, in next 6 months by jan feb 2022 so uh, during this time how do i leverage my tool set better how do i leverage my it better uh, to convert these into first party a and uh, you know sort of create a unified customer profile marrying the two right and that's where vakul spoke about uh, our data management platform that that adobe offers that helps you do that correct correct uh, i'm seeing a lot of interesting questions from our audiences so we'll, we we we're just you know uh, coming to the end of our discussion and then we'll move on to taking some some of these questions so you know uh, as we as we come towards uh, you know uh, concluding this discussion and this passage i'll uh, again come to vakul and try and understand uh, what the future looks like and what is like you know uh, the future of programmatic advertising digital advertising look like in this entire populous world your take on this my take is fairly simple uh, as first uh, you save part your first party data try to collect uh, as much data as you can if you're doing that first step right then try to get your first party data really strong uh, and make it even stronger by uh, collaborating with second party or third party data points use that uh, in your prospecting and your engagement campaigns and that will definitely drive efficiencies it very brief right. but that is what my take would be correct uh so i don't want to understand from you how do uh, brands in this you know uh, cookless world uh, you know ensure better outcomes so oh, absolutely and a great question satyajit uh, this is something that uh, is playing on top of minds of most of the marketer and uh, as i mentioned in the session uh, this this is also largely dependent on the industry Uh, a mature industry like uh, Pakul's, like Grofers, uh, they are doing their fair bit to collect first-party data. But there were industries, or there are industries, who have not looked into it at all, right? Uh, because no one comes to my website, no one uh, interacts with my brand on the website. So third-party data is good for me for branding, advertising. Uh, if it's conversion, I can always point them to a Grofers or a Flipkart or such. Right? Uh, those brands are now looking at building uh, the first-party data. so there are industries where the customer journeys are going to completely change that right? i gave an example of cpg industry mm-hmm. so those brands are looking at things very very differently they are looking at uh, building purpose built sites that can help them capture first party data better that can motivate their customers to authenticate right if i want to buy uh, xyz brand of shampoo right what is my motivation to authenticate very less Right? I would. I just want to buy that shampoo. I can go to Grofers. I can go to somewhere else. But is there a motivation that I can create? Right? Is there an engagement that I can create where I come and authenticate myself? It's useful for me, uh, and it's beneficial to the business. Right. So there are businesses who are thinking uh, their customer journeys and web properties and apps very very differently. Right. It's that's the one end of spectrum. The other end of spectrum uh, are mature customers. Uh, who already have it, uh, they are just fine tuning, right? They are doing small tweaks. Uh, they are doing it very smartly. Capture more first party data, uh, mm-hmm. third party use it as it lasts, right? Take hey while sun shines. So there are some who also think it that way. As long as it's there, uh, why not completely use it? Uh, so those are the two ends, and the answer for each company lies somewhere between. There could be instances where you have to completely redo your customer journey. while there could be instances that minor tweaks are good enough right? there could be instances where you have to capture data holistically there could be instances that you're already doing it a uh, few minor tweaks are good enough so that's my trick great i think we have you know uh, touched upon all important aspects of uh, cookless world i'm sure you know it's 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 a it's a, it's so vast that you know you can't uh, cover it in in a in a chat of 20 or you know 25 minutes uh, but you know uh, i'm keeping it short and i'm moving on to the questions we have some very intriguing questions from our audiences and uh, i'm just opening the floor and uh, you know uh, taking the questions and uh, maybe you know uh, both of you whoever wants to you know uh, take a shot at these they, they can you know just uh, go ahead and uh, do that 
So, uh, you know, I have a very interesting question from uh, Sharan Veer and, you know, uh, so mostly this is uh, directed towards Vakul, but I think, you know, Samitra would be, it would be great to have your inputs as well. So uh, what is the approximate time, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, a brand needs to adapt to cookie-less world? And especially when, you know, uh, the brand has not been uh, focusing towards capturing the first party data. I think the time is now a very short answer, right? right. Uh, it's already very late. So you should just start as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, the time uh, could be anything. I mean, the, the right time is now. If he's, uh, if the, uh, if the question is around time frame, right? How much time mm -hmm. would it take? Uh, I can probably take a stab at it. Uh, obviously, the start has to be now, uh, but it would take anything between uh, four to six weeks of effort to actually start first parting data in a very robust way, right? Uh, and then obviously, data will take its own time to build. Uh, it's a journey, as I said, right? It's a crawl, walk, run process that I spoke about. Uh, so start with better collecting data, marry it with uh, an authenticated customer profile, start using it in real time, uh, I think anything between three to six months uh, is a good time uh, where there could be phased deliveries, you know, something that business can consume. Obviously, it's not something that you start today and consume at the end of six months, right? Those days are gone. So how can I have an agile methodology where every six weeks I have something new to try uh, in the business, I consume it and take it to the, to the next level. But if you are not doing anything, I think it will at least take six months for you to reach to some stage also some data to build to at least start showing up in your reports so on and so forth. Great, great. Uh, and, you know, I just remember, you know, uh, Vakul had requested for it that he had a hard stop at four. So Vakul, I'm just trying to uh, wrap it up as, as, as quickly as possible. Oh. We have a very interesting question. And, you know, uh, this is this this is obviously, you know, uh, targeted towards uh, Vakul. Uh, so, you know, uh, somebody is asking, will there be a bigger challenge uh, for marketers to figure out uh, you know, what content the consumer is consuming. And uh, so by content, I'm sure, you know, uh, he means uh, in advertising content. And uh, how do the marketers plan their media spends uh, in this uh, in this entire environment? So I think media planning will be uh, very different, right? Uh, wherein you will try to see what content pieces are, are your target. First, identify the target audience, right? Because target audience would be different for different players. Once you've identified your target audience, then probably there are media agencies will help you understand that okay, this age group, male, female, etc. These are the popular channels that they spend most of their time in, right? Uh, and those could be very different. For example, a housewife aged between 30 to 35 would have very different preferences versus a teenager or a uh, 18 to 22 year old uh, uh, college going student. Their preferences will be very different. So first identify the TG, uh, then look at different media consumption that they have. Obviously lower the uh, age group, higher is your penetration on OTT channels, uh, different preferences on the uh, different websites that they spend time on, etc. But it has to do with your TG, then understanding where they do, uh, where do they spend most of their time, and then making your relevant media planning. Uh, you know, uh, just just quickly. You know, I just I think we have just time for you know uh, maybe two questions more. Uh, so you know, I'll uh, take this question. I'll, I'll uh, uh, you know organically direct it to Samitra. Uh, so somebody is asking like you know, uh, will this entire cookless uh, environment like you know, uh, will there be a change in uh, the kind of uh, you know di uh, digital spends being made by brands due to this uh, cookless environment? Uh, I don't think so the overall uh, spend will will change, right? Mm -hmm. What will change is probably where are you putting your money? Uh, and I think Bakul can, can answer this better because he's someone who does it. I'm answering based from what I hear from my customers. But I think uh, that the mix uh, that you use right, uh, to spend your money, uh, that will change. That will maybe increasingly gravitate towards uh, authenticated customers and first party as against uh, media buys, right? But overall spend, uh, I don't think so. Will will go down. It it may increase as digital penetration increase. Uh, as all of us work from home more and more, we shop from home more and more, right? Uh, we it will not reduce. Yeah, Samitra is bang on there. In fact, it's increasing year on year. 
that is made to do with people spending more time on digital platforms uh, like you need to be very smart about it um, because if you're not having uh, you're not cookies if they don't work in future then you just need to be much more smarter about uh, spending those dollars but it will definitely increase right uh, i think we have just the time for you know uh, taking one last question and this is directed to both of you so you know uh, whoever wants to go first uh, how can one make first party data stronger like you know uh, if if anybody uh, any one of you can uh, you know share some respective examples and obviously you know uh, the question is directed towards uh, the an external environment where uh, we are talking about non customers first how can you want to take no so uh, i think uh... for us where what do you authenticate as the first party what is the key that you use that is very important that should work for your business right and then how do you ensure that if 100 people are entering the funnel most of them are giving you that key right and hence the onboarding process so if these two things are sorted then i think you have a good onboarding process plus you are capturing more and more first party data right uh, some authority yeah i think three things one is the granularity of data that you are capturing first party data right how many data elements you can capture in a short span of time when customer is on your digital property uh, in, in how quickly you capture it right so in real time and then how do you marry that data set with with what you already have right? so if i am an authenticated user how do i sort of marry that behavioral data to my transactional data to my loyalty points you know to my behavior as a customer to my customer complaints right to create uh, that holistic set correct correct right great uh, so i think we have just you know uh, uh, you know been on time and you know being on time is always a virtue as they say right so thank you gentlemen you know it was a great pleasure talking to you you know both of you uh, vakul and somitra and you know giving us and our audiences a great insight into how the cookless uh, world would Uh, you know uh, finally look like you know i'm sure you know there are a lot of uh, you know new discussion tracks that we would you know uh, need to do to understand it better uh, but i think today we have uh, actually you know touched upon all the major aspects of uh, cookless world and uh, uh, i'm sure at least i am going uh, back with a lot of uh, takeaways on how uh, you know marketing is going to shape up in this uh, you know world garden Uh, i would like to thank uh, you know uh, both our uh, panelists as well as all of you who have been joining who have, who have joined us today uh, and uh, i hope that you know we have uh, you know made you know uh, made justice and you know uh, we have tried to make your time worthwhile uh, so until next time you know stay tuned to us keep reading us and for any other suggestions on uh, what varied subjects we can you know uh, touch upon to write to us thank you so much thank you so much for joining us thank you guys thank, thank you samitra thank you so thank you vakul thank you thank you thanks thanks so much bye